Hi, I'm Kim Dykstra with the Town of Breckenridge for the update for the Town Council on July 8, 2014. If you'd like to know any more information about the town, go perhaps and listen to, listen to the meetings. We have agendas now online as well as minutes that are actually online. You can actually go and listen to them. Um, as well as Facebook and Twitter um, and Engage Breckenridge from time to time. We have topics that we'd like to hear your input from. Um, you can also go online at townofbreckenridge.com Got lots of information about what's going on here, and uh, you can do some research on there if you're looking for a specific topic. Um, but first of all, we'd like to ask you to listen to Town Manager Tim Gagan to find out about all the highlights of the July 8th Town Council meeting. Tim, July 8th was the first meeting of the Town Council for July, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a we have some uh, deed restriction resolution for Maggie Placer, or I'm sorry, Maggie Point. It's a affordable housing mm -hmm. project. Yeah, it used to be known as Maggie Placer, actually. Sorry. It's gone through a couple of iterations. It's now called Maggie Point. Uh, this is a project down by the Ski and Racket Club that the town actually approved quite a while ago for an annexation, and now they're ready to start building. It's going to be nine affordable housing units and nine uh, non-affordable or market rate reunit units. And the good news is they've sold all nine or have contracts on all nine of the affordable. So it's going to be off and running. Uh, and what we did last night was actually put in place the final deed restriction, which are very important for our affordable housing. It keeps the units uh, available for people that have the income uh, limitations, and it tries to maintain that affordability for a long period of time. So when, when they sell, those units will remain down in those income brackets. And uh, these, a lot of these are around 80 to 100% AMI, which are very attractive units for our workers. Yes, indeed. Um, the other, we, we had a, a number of public project updates, but the, some of the highlights include the Bre Breckenridge Grand Vacations Community Center mm -hmm. and South Broach Library. We're going to have a sneak peek on August 17. Right, the, uh, the group that's been involved with the fundraising and helping to, to facilitate the project uh, want to have the public, give the really the local public, uh, our, our local population, a chance to come in and see the building where it's kind of pre-final. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it'd be quite a way from final, but uh, it's really an opportunity to see the, uh, the building as it's going to look when it does get finalized with the, uh, the taking out of the floor, the rafters being exposed just before drywall begins. So it's really a great opportunity for people to get a good uh, bird's eye view of, of the building. And it's going to be on August 17th. Uh, I think it's from 3 one to, to three. 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. And it's basically an open, uh, kind of an open house type of thing. Come in, take a look at it. Uh, obviously, the fundraisers hope it'll kind of stimulate a little interest in a few more donations, which would be great, uh, which has been actually been great by the community, almost close to $2 million raised. And then we'll, we'll close it up again, and nobody will be able to get in there until December which will be the, uh, hopefully, uh, early December will be the opening of uh, the actual building with the library, speakeasy, community room, a couple non-for-profit offices, the BHA with their uh, historical displays, archives. So uh, this will be the first great opportunity for the public to get in there and see what this building looks like and why we were so excited about fixing it up. Yeah, it's, I think there's gonna have, there are gonna be people at different stations so they mm -hmm. can tell them exactly what's gonna be done in that particular area. Exactly. It's that. gonna be great. People gotta remember this building is over 100 years old, built in the late 1800s. So it is the first brick building that was built in Breckenridge and to be able to restore it back to uh, pristine condition is just fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be a great use of that building. Um, the other one that I think a lot of people have uh, mm -hmm. interest in for our public projects is the Na Main Street Park, which mm -hmm. is kind of the North Main Street Park. And we got an update on uh, where the progress or lack thereof is is going uh, <laughs> due to some uh, some higher bids than usual. Yeah, we, we get a lot of calls on that one because I think the public got kind of excited about this potential for a park in the downtown area. This is the property next to Alpine Bank on Main Street. And uh, we actually have a design, and the designer actually gave us a price, uh, and then they changed that price. So we were a little disappointed that the price went up substantially from what we originally were kind of promised. So we're out actually getting local bids. Uh, we're going to open it up to local bidders, uh, break the project up, and the town's going to take over management of it and hopefully bring that price back down to around the budget number that the council originally authorized. If for some reason the price is still coming a little high, we'll be back talking to council very shortly here. But hopefully if the price is coming good, construction could start within the next 15 to 30 days. That'd be great, that'd be great. Um, 
going kind of back to our public projects, there have been some questions from the council about the new library that's going to be at the community center mm -hmm. uh, and library, their operating hours. And since this is being built for the future, for you know high school kids and grade school kids and a lot of kids to come there, as well as a lot of things that are maybe after normal business hours, the council was a bit concerned about those operating hours. Right, and, and it wasn't just the council. I, I think we heard from a number of community members some leaders in the community who are saying, hey, this is a unique opportunity to have a library in the middle of the downtown or, or in the middle of the center of town with uh, great access to bus routes and, and uh, the hope, uh, and clearly with that technology type of improvements, that it would really be used heavily by the local community. And that meant trying to be a little bit more flexible about when hours they would normally be open. The other libraries in the county kind of go the gamut from sometimes not open on Sundays to limited hours on Saturday, not very late in the evening. And the, the council was, uh, as have been several community members saying, let's really try to make sure that this library is open during the times that the community can really use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that is gonna be some surveys that the library board is gonna do to try to identify that, get into the schools, get into CMC, um, get around even to uh, an awful lot of users are visitors, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. Uh, and so the hope is that based on a lot of that data, the library board will come back with uh, a, a, maybe a different, different framework of what they do normally and look at a, a little bit more of creativity about what that thing could be open for. Obviously, you don't want to open when nobody's there, mm -hmm. I mean, because they're paying staff. But at the same time, we also don't want to have it closed when a lot of people might use it. So that'll be the effort, and the, the county's very excited about doing that, and the library board is going to focus on that now in the next couple of months. We've got plenty of time before we got to open in December, so hopefully we'll come up with something good and uh, be very, very usable by the community. Great, great. And now the big topic. Uh, we've actually been uh, promoting this through a lot of Engage Breckenridge, which is our online kind of questionnaire, give us your feedback. The Go Breck folks have been going out to the business community. Um, a lot had a lot of public comment in regards to um, allowing the current operator of uh, marijuana retail in downtown. He was grandfathered in because he had a, uh, he had, um, a, a lease through the end of August. Was right. geared to go out uh, as of September 1st. Um, the council has now opened it up for debate again. Right. The previous council, actually, when retail marijuana became the law, uh, agreed that we should have retail marijuana in town. Uh, but there was a great deal of concern by that council that it maybe is not appropriate to have it in the core of town, particularly on Main Street. Uh, and a lot of that's about branding. It's a lot the marketability of the community. Do you want to be known as Amsterdam Row in, in uh, Colorado? A whole variety of different issues that were of concern to the council at that time. Well, that was a year ago, and now we have a new council. And the new council, uh, along with some lobbying by an awful lot of folks out there, including the folks out on Airport Road that have other uh, marijuana sh uh, retail operations, about the lack of fairness by having one in town and the rest of them on the outskirts of town. So a whole lot of that debate has been kind of swirling around the last month or so. And so the council said, well, we ought to take it on. So they did, and we had a very large crowd based on a lot of feedback that came in from all those different sources, along with just people physically wanting, very interested. And it was a very split council at the end of the day. Uh, the uh, majority of the council by four uh, to three decided that why not open it up uh, and allow the current business to stay, keeping in mind that their focus is keeping it not on the ground floor but on the second story, maybe in the basement, uh, and opening it up to other business to be able to come into the downtown. And they were a little less, uh, I guess, uh, that they weren't swayed by the arguments uh, of the other three, which were concerned about the branding, uh, is going slow, let's, let's see how this thing matures over some period of time. And uh, so the council's direction is to come back with some ordinance changes that are going to allow the opening up of the core town on the second floor to other marijuana operations, retail operations, with restrictions. We don't know what they are yet. That'll be a lot of the discussion that'll occur in the next couple of months and uh, continue the current one to allow it to continue to operate. So it'll be interesting. Uh, the public will continue to be invited to have a part of what are those restrictions. Uh, but it, it was a very positive, very uh, spirited debate. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we had very passionate people on both sides of the argument. Um, we, time will tell about whether or not it's a great decision or maybe not such a great decision. But I think as a whole, the good news is that pot shops, uh, marijuana shops in town have done a great job operationally. And I think if we had had problems, there wouldn't have been that kind of a discussion. But because they've done a great job educating the users, making sure that they don't violate the law, no public consumption, um, and you know, it, it's very popular. I mean, obviously with our visitors, they're, they're doing bank, gangbuster businesses. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but in the next couple of months, the, there will be a change that will allow the downtown to be opened up to a few more of those operations. Right, and the really, I think the really positive thing about it is that, like you said, it, it was a very civil, discussion, passionate mm -hmm. people on both sides, but there was a, a mutual respect of, of one another's yes. um, thought process and, In, and responses. Including the council. I mean, exactly. they, they yep. understood there's just a just a, a philosophical difference of opinions mm -hmm. occasionally, and that's what makes great government and, and exactly. good debates. Exactly, yep, it yep. was great. Thanks. Sure. There you have it from the July 8th Town Council meeting here at Breckenridge Town Hall. Uh, we invite you to come to all the town council meetings or even get involved just by going online, listening to the minutes or uh, put, downloading a, a, an event packet uh, that we have for each uh, town council meeting. We hold town council here at Breckenridge Town Hall on the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month. Uh, work session begins at 3 p.m. where you can see the, all of the things that are going on with the town of Breckenridge. And then at 7.30 is the evening regular meeting. That's the official meeting and we have public comments starting at 7.30. All of that information is online at www.townofbreckenridge.com. And we look forward to seeing you at the next town council meeting, which will be Tuesday, July 22nd.